This is a study of the voice source and articulation of overtone singing. It's a case study and my co-authors are Anna Maria Hefele, professional overtone singer, and Björn Lindblom, retired um, professor of phonetics at the Stockholm University. Uh, what is overtone singing? It is um, singing where the spectrum typically looks like this, a very strong uh, boosting of one of the harmonic partials. Our question is, how is that being produced? Earlier studies like Bluetooth in 92 has found a long closed phase, nasalization and clustering of the second and third formant as the explanation of overtone singing. Klingholz argued that it could also be a question of a very, very narrow formant bandwidth. Saus agreed with Blotoft and Hefele too that it is a clustering of the second and third formant um, produced by uh, dividing the vocal tract into a back cavity and a front cavity by lifting the tongue tip. Our material was a sound recording um, of Anna Maria singing a sequence from low to high to low partials, sounded like this approximately. And then we had also an MR video of showing Anna Maria's um, vocal tract in profile. And that was done by um, the Freiburg University, Bernhard Richter, Echtenach, Strasser, and Burdumi. Uh, we also completed this with a frontal video of Anna Maria's lip opening while she was singing that sequences of unboosted overtones. The method was to analyze the voice source by inverse filtering the audio recording. So we got source parameters and formant frequencies. We measured the shape of the back part of the vocal tract from the MR video. So we get, got the shape of the back cavity from that. And then we measured the lip opening and front cavity from the frontal video, and that yielded the shape of the front cavity. And these two measurements produced the vocal tract shape or in other words, area functions. The formant frequencies of these area functions was then measured by means of a program. So we had uh, formant frequencies derived from the MR uh, video and from the front video. And then we could compare the formant frequencies from the uh, inverse filtering and from the MR video. That's the content. Spectrum envelope and formant frequencies. Vocal tract transfer function is predictable. And here's an example. If we have 500, 1500, 2500, 3500, we get formant amplitudes like that. If we cluster second and third formant, you could see that the amplitude of these formants increase. And if we cluster them even more, we could get a huge amplification of a single partial like this. Um, um, by sheer uh, resonance in the vocal tract. So formant amplitude depends very much on formant proximity. Inverse filtering, what that did that yield? Well, it builds on the fact that the radiated spectrum is a product of a transfer function and a voice source. And therefore, you could take the radiated spectrum, subtract the transfer function, and you will have information on the voice source, which is the um, pulsating transglottal airflow. Here's an example. Radiated spectrum like, look like this with a hugely amplified seventh partial. Um, uh, transfer function assumed um, put to be he here with the first, second, third, and fourth formants. The second and third formant boosting uh, the this partial. So um, the criteria for for choosing this. Uh, filter settings is a ripple-free closed phase and a spectrum envelope of this signal as void as possible of dips and peaks around the formant frequencies. Okay, so what were the voice source characteristics? Well, long closed phase and that means a closed quotient was rather elevated, much higher than in female normal female voices. Formant frequencies are determined by the vocal tract shape, as you know, 
And here we um, ha had to estimate the uh, volume of the front cavity. The front cavity can be um, regarded as an Helmholtz resonator with a volume uh, and a lip opening, um, which is kind of the neck of the whole Helmholtz res resonator. We needed then to have um, the boosted frequencies and then we needed to have the lip opening. So we combine the measurements of the lip opening from the front uh, video and um, then we, um, we uh, could postulate what the, the vol vol front cavity volume were for the different boosted frequencies and uh, the results were looking like this. Here you have the frequency of the boosted partial, and here you have the postulated de derived uh, front cavity volume. And the uh, data points for the various boosted frequencies came nicely together, as you could see, and could be approximated by a curve. And then we could go from MR image to cross-sectional area, taking the profile and uh, distributing a grid line system, and then measure the distance, um, the sagittal distance from the back forearm sole or for the um, hard palate and down to the, uh, to, to the tongue contour. And then uh, we uh, could convert these sagittal distances by an equation to uh, cross-sectional areas uh, on the basis of measurements published by Eric Stotter and his co-workers um, pre previously. These are then the grid line numbers, 15 is close to the glottis and four close to the lip, uh, the um, um, tongue tip constriction and the slopes and the intercepts at the various positions of the grid lines. And this is the Wormflex software and we process should um, program that into uh, the Wormfleck um, program written by Johan Lilienkrantz, uh, and uh, that converts the area function to a transfer function. So we could here, in this case, see that the second and third formant was clustering around 2100 hertz with this front cavity and this um, time tip constriction. Uh, now we could have, now we had f second and third form and frequency from the area functions and they are the green um, and then uh, that is rising uh, in the rising um, part of the, of the sequence and this is the falling part of the sequence, it's quite similar. And then uh, we had, uh, mm, then we had the, um, um, the corresponding data from the inverse filtering, and you see a striking similarity. So we could conclude that the voice source is characterized by long closed phase, which is a sign of a de elevated degree of glottal reduction or slightly pressed type of phonation. Articulation, uh, it was uh, clear that it was a twin um, cavity uh, system uh, for low boosted partials. The elevated tongue tip was um, like in the green contour here. And for high boosted partial, the tongue was constricting a, long, a longer distance along the hard palate. The F2, the second formant, is a back pharynx, um, back cavity resonance and uh, the third formant is a front cavity resonance. The amplitude of the boosted partials is then a result of the clustering of the second and third formants. So we could say that our uh, investigating has shown that overtone singing can be exhaustively explained uh, within the source filter theory of voice production. And that is the end of the story. <laughs>